Bar takes a call. Strike mentioned, gentlemen, the inspirational stories of Rocco Baldelli, Josh Hamilton. Got to put John Lester in that category, too, for this Boston Red Sox team. Diagnosed with lymphoma and knocked out from baseball season, and he came back. And the Red Sox were very, very careful in making sure he wasn't overexerting himself. And he told Perry Francona, "Hey, I'm fine. Don't worry about me." And Francona called up Lester's parents and said, "Your son's not going to be too happy with us, but we're going to put a ring on him." And in retrospect, when Lester really got to the point where he was ready to compete again in a major league level, he thanked the way that Terry Francona and John Farrell utilized him so carefully and made sure that they didn't overextend him. And then coming from the chemotherapy, when he came back, they really, his body has changed. If you look at John two or three years ago in a Red Sox uniform, he's very thin, but they let him mature his body physically. And that's why he's thrown the ball probably four or five miles an hour more. High fly ball down the left field line. That's trouble. That ball is off the base of the wall. Ibar hustling for two. He just missed a homer. Instead, he's in scoring position with nobody out. Well, you can see John Madden is John Madden. Joe Madden is thinking about. This matchup here with Navarro, he's been a clutch hitter for them all year long. And the on deck batter is Rocco Baldelli, who has not had any luck at all against John Lester. So you give Navarro the freedom to swing away here. Well, he's only sacrificed three times during the regular season, so it's not something they do a lot of. Navarro's proved so much with runners in scoring position. That's why he's allowed to swing the bat. 214 last year, 314 this year. And no sacrifices for the Rays in this ALCS. Baldelli waits next. 1 1 game, 2 0 count. Bench for the Rays that was very quiet last night. Top step of the dugout. Three balls and a strike. Now a natural right hand hitter learned how to switch hit starting at the age of 13. Asked to find a way to move high bar up 90 feet. Full count. So now with two strikes he really has to focus on a productive out. Thinking to the right side against Lester. It's tough to do when Lester pitches you inside so hard. But with a defense relatively straight away on the infield. Right now you want to make sure at a minimum you advance Ibar from second to third. Surrounds has no play in field hit. Here's Paul Dell. He took a call third his first time. And a home run cut. Strike one. In our pregame meeting with Joe Madden, he talked about Baldelli really struggling against John Lester, but he also said he's got a chance to catch up with one, as he did in Boston. He had a three-run home run off of Paul Burke. 
But Lester has really handcuffed Ball down. Swing and a towering fly ball down the left field line. But it's a loud strike, too. Well, it's a three run home run from Valdelli off Paul Bird. A little slider in the middle of the plate. Joe Madden's even said that he's starting him against the left hander Lester, but a lot of times he takes better at bats against right handed pitching. Well, he didn't get to the big leagues this year until August 26. He's got a lot of rush. The pitch that has caused Baldelli so many problems against Lester has been the breaking ball down and in. And now Baratek's going to go out and put together a game plan. side of the bun. Now you don't butt in this situation because Bartlett's so good against left-handed pitching. And they've got a left-handed batter on deck in Ewell Moore. So Joe Madden is saying, you know what? Jason, I got a lot of confidence in your ability, especially inside. He's very quick inside and he's a good hitter to face John Lester in this situation. And it's not part of Joe Madden's Tampa Bay's game plan. Only 23 sack bunts. That was last in the American League. Two strikes. And that's off the face of the Boston dugout. Now, quickly, momentum has shifted. Lester retired the first nine men in this game. Leadoff man reached in the fourth, a run scored. Leadoff man has reached in this fifth, one run has scored. Pitch of the night strikes out Bartlett for the first out of this fifth inning. Iwamura recorded the first raise hit of this game. He's jammed, and Lester will make the pack to first. Runners move up to second and third. This is where this lineup is very, very difficult for Terry Francona. He's studying the matchups. Joe Madden has his lineup perfectly situated. Lefty, righty, power. There's a lot of balance here with the base open. You wonder if Francona will put Upton on. He's been so good against Boston. You got a base open, put him on. But then again, Pena has good numbers against Lester. It's really a rock and a hard place here. And if you don't walk him, it's Francona trusting Lester's stuff over Upton's abilities. He's got a lot of confidence in Lester to make a big pitch here. He's back to the windup with two outs. And a drive down the left field line, but well found. Three 
against John Lester. A.J. Upton got a high fastball, hit it over the Green Monster seats. They are keeping the ball down. They're throwing him a steady diet of breaking pitches. That was a three-run homer. He'd love another one here. And that's fisted to short. Cora's got it. And Lester gives up hits to the first three men he faces in the fifth inning and nothing else. But the Rays lead in pivotal game seven. 2-1 is your score in St. Pete.